Mmm, beanless coffee. Welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt in a nutshell. Today we're going to be reacting to how to terraform Venus quickly. I'll be completely honest, I have no idea on this one. <laughs> I got nothing. Nothing at all. So I guess let's just hop right in. Leaving Earth to find new homes in space is an old dream of humanity and will mm -hmm. sooner or later be necessary for our survival. Yep. The planet that gets the most attention is Mars, a small, toxic, and energy poor planet that just about seems good enough for a colony of depressed humans huddled in underground cities. <laughs> what do we think bigger? What if we yeah, why Mars? One of the most hostile and deadly places in the solar system and turn it into a colony. Not by building lofty cloud cities, but by creating a proper second Earth. We can't even make LA habitable. I'm sorry, that was a bad one. I just keep thinking of that Hell of a Boss episode where they were just making fun of LA nonstop. And I just had to get in on the action. It might be easier than you think. Venus is by far the hottest planet in the solar system with a surface temperature of 460 degrees Celsius. Hot enough yeah. to not let. This heat is due to the most extreme greenhouse effect in the solar system. Ah, oh, they got a runaway greenhouse. Heat. Even a rise from 0.03% to 0.04% in Earth's atmosphere is heating up our planet right now. Venus's mm, yep. atmosphere is 97% CO2. Also, Jeez, Venus's how? Venus's atmosphere is 93 times denser than Earth's. Standing on Venus's surface would feel like taking a dive about 900 meters deep into the ocean. The pressure would kill you instantly. Wow. It's a truly horrible place. So How does it get that much CO2? First and foremost, Venus is almost as big as Earth and has 90% of its surface gravity. Oh, surface wow. Surface gravity is a big problem when colonizing the solar system because it's very likely that long stays in low gravity places will have negative health effects. Yeah, I've heard about that before, that your bones stretch in and... ...in the solar system. A new home for billions of humans and trillions of animals. So Venus is pretty similar when it comes to gravity. ...blue sky. A properly terraformed Venus may be the most pleasant place to live outside of Earth. While we can't exactly terraform Venus today, a slightly more ambitious future version of us could take this project on. So it's not possible right now. ...to complete and be a huge challenge like building the Great Pyramids was for our ancestors. But then, it's not like humans have never started projects that took more than a lifetime to complete. Okay, it's very true. Let's do it. Before anything else, we need to cool Venus down and remove the gas that makes up the extremely heavy atmosphere. As mm -hmm. mentioned, there's a lot of it. Around 465 million billion tons. How do we do wow. this? There are a few options. We could create giant solar collectors powering a huge array of laser beams that heat up the atmosphere so much... Deadly space lasers. Although we would need thousands of times the entire power generating capacity of humanity, and it would still take thousands of years to remove the atmosphere. <laughs> the way is to sequester the atmosphere, binding the CO2 What's in that compounds through chemical reactions. We oh, that makes a lot of sense. Calcium or magnesium on mercury and shoot them at Venus via mass drive systems, electric rails that make rockets unnecessary on smaller planets. The metals would combine to bind the CO2 into different carbonates mm. basically forever. But the scale makes the whole thing impractical. Yeah. We need several hundred billion tons of material to sequester the CO2 this way. And then what would you do with the sequestered material? Take too long. An equally ridiculous idea that could actually work is to put Venus in the shade, literally, by constructing a huge mirror to blot out the sun to just freeze the atmosphere. The mirror doesn't need to be complex or massive, just a very thin foil with a little structural support. Buildings with okay. a large flat surface so close to the sun will turn it effectively into a solar sail and push it out of position. So instead of yep. one giant circular object, our mirror will consist of many different pieces. 
Annular slats of angled mirrors can reflect sunlight from one set of mirrors to the next. Mirrors would be angled, reflecting light from one to another until the light is redirected to the back, balancing the force on the front and holding It seems the like there's a lot to go wrong with that solution though. Getting the infrastructure in place it seems overly complex. Then escalate. For the first few decades, the atmosphere slowly cools down but stays dense and deadly. Until after some 60 years, it reaches the critical temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. Suddenly, the great flood begins on Venus as so everything CO2 starts turns to liquid at this pressure and begins to rain. Ah. A constant global rainstorm of unbelievable proportions lasting 30 years. Wow. And temperature suddenly begin to drop in unison. Is that what happened to Noah? Puddles turn into lakes and oceans. The surface temperature is now minus 56 degrees Celsius, Jeez. and the pressure has dropped to only seven times the pressure on Earth. Finally, at a really unpleasant minus 81 degrees Celsius, the CO2 oceans begin to freeze and the rain turns into snow. This leaves us with a frozen Venus covered in oceans as hard as rock and gigantic CO2 glaciers. What remains okay, but in the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen at about three times. Earth's wouldn't it be released if it heated back up? If you don't mind freezing and suffocating, you can now take a stroll over Venus's surface. But the frozen CO2 remains a bit of a problem. At mm -hmm. some point, we want to warm up the planet, but if we do, the CO2 ice will melt and fill up the atmosphere again. Okay, so yeah, that's what I thought. To keep it from doing that. One is to simply cover it all with cheap plastic insulation and cover it up with ground up Venus rock or water oceans. Although some planetary scientists will be very stressed out about us building a new planet containing a potential time bomb like that. Yeah, that seems a little irresponsible to me. ...could melt a lot of CO2 at once and ruin everything. Another obvious solution is to shoot it all out into space and collect it into a small moon for storage and future use. We can make this more efficient by using mass drive instead of rockets but mm. moving all that mass will still be a pretty intense challenge that will take yeah you gotta move an entire planet's surface basically the atmosphere to move forward we need water which we could get from ice moons Europa a moon of Jupiter has twice as much water as Earth's oceans now, really a moon and transporting it through the solar system is not exactly isn't Europa the one that they're planning the mission to to drill down or melt down through the ice and potentially release um, a swarm of bots for exploration? I had heard that that was maybe not being planned, but being considered because they think that life could be deep under the ice in the underground oceans there. But it was like kilometers thick ice, I think. Easy. So instead, it might be easier to cut chunks of ice off Europa with an army of construction drones and shoot them at Venus using more of those mass drivers. Space tethers could save us a lot of effort and energy here. We made a whole video explaining how they work, but the sky they are slings that can take a That sounds pretty cool. Ends. On Europa, they do most of the work needed to catapult our ice to Venus. The ice hits the Venus tethers, which gently hmm. drop it into the atmosphere, where it falls down as snow. In exchange, huh. the Venus tethers get to catch CO2 ice shot up from below and accelerate it into orbit. We can remove excess nitrogen using this same method to further lower our atmospheric pressure. After a few decades or centuries, Venus would be covered by a nice, shallow, frozen ocean a few hundred meters deep. It would look extremely different from today. A few continents and countless islands have formed. This is beginning to look a bit like our planet. Now the last and most magnificent phase of terraforming begins, making the atmosphere breathable and adding life. First, we need light though, and we need to heat the planet up again. A Venus day is 2,802 hours long, more than 116 Earth days. So if we wow. just move our giant mirror, we would grill half of our planet. <laughs> without the massive atmosphere, temperatures would reach unbearable levels. Yeah. The simplest way to create a day-night cycle and let some energy in again is with another set of mirrors to illuminate our continents and melt our water oceans. Which okay. Is completely controlled Once again, seems like a lot could go wrong with that plan. The atmosphere is now mostly made up of nitrogen and basically devoid of oxygen. So the first inhabitants will likely be trillions and trillions of cyanobacteria, which can get photosynthesis. 
synthesizing and release oxygen. Yeah. We know that they can quickly turn around the atmosphere of a planet because billions of years ago, they were probably responsible for turning the toxic atmosphere of our young Earth into an atmosphere with enough oxygen for more complex animal life. Hmm. But not only that, cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into nutrients that can be used by living beings. This way, okay. we will essentially fertilize our dead ocean water and prepare it for more complex organisms. Ah, oh, that's clever. And our colonists need to grind down some of the former Venusian surface to make soil for nitrogen-fixing plants to grow on. Eventually, billions of trees would spread, creating large forests covering massive parts of the continents. Venus huh. would turn green. To speed things up, CO2 would be strategically released to supply the plants and cyanobacteria. Areas already covered with plants could get extra daylight from our orbital mirrors, so the plants would be active for most of each day. Maybe we won't have to do this with the same plants and animals we know today. As genetic engineering matures and our understanding of genetics and the machinery of life expands, we might just engineer life as we need it. All in all, yeah, bioengineering is getting pretty crazy, isn't it? Breathable by humans. In the meantime, you could stroll around with nothing more than regular clothes and an oxygen mask. Settlers would enjoy a vast new planet filled with resources and bathed in sunlight. They might think of new ways to use the vast amounts of carbon dioxide, ice and nitrogen orbiting in space above. Industrial processes, rocket fuel, or even boosting the terraforming of another planet like tiny Mars. Venus is fully terraformed. Animals roam through vast ecosystems. Cities are being constructed. Billions of settlers and their descendants make this world their home. They will see images of the past, how Venus was once the most hostile planet around, how it took hundreds of years to freeze hell and to ship in the oceans, and another few thousand years to make it possible to breathe freely. They mm -hmm. will barely be able to believe it. Okay. Maybe it's not that easy. That would be to cool. Venus, and a lot of things must go right for this future to become reality. But it is possible. And it's a lot of failure points. Within the reach of a motivated and slightly more advanced humanity that wants to venture into space. The only thing that's stopping it is our imagination. And that, at least, is a problem that's easy to overcome. I suppose that's it, true. Your imagination is the only thing stopping you from doing all kinds of things. All you need is a it's true. Mind. Can you imagine being the engineer down the road, like generations and generations from now, that messed up on one of the calculations and ended up frying or freezing or just making a catastrophic error that set us back hundreds, if not thousands of years in the terraforming process? Talk about a bad day at work. I think it's really cool. I think that everything they talked about made sense and it's a really wonderful thing to think about. I do think that terraforming any planet is going to be something for quite a bit down the road. Not anything that we're going to start within our lifetimes. That's my personal opinion. Personally, I think that we have a lot of problems here on Earth that we can't even work together to fix. <laughs> Human greed prevails, you know? And it would be nice to see that scale of effort maybe focused in on some of the problems we have here and fix that stuff. We're getting to the point as a species where there's really no excuse why life can't be heaven for everybody. But I think one day it's certainly something that we as a species could overtake and should overtake. I'm just a little sad that I most likely won't be around to see that start. Anyway, what a great video. As always, I enjoy these Kurz Kazad ones. They're very talented. They make amazing videos they keep it entertaining informative i mean just all around top notch thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it if you like this content hit that like button hit the sub button if you want to see more reactions and i hope that you have yourself a wonderful day